We are going to declare in this place that God is our Ebenezer. Hallelujah. And this fire has brought us. And so we say, Ni mwewa mwewa visha pano wayawe. Hallelujah. Jesus, shada katada bala. Kala to nata badish.
कुछ बना चलो ये कुछ बना चलो ये कुछ बना चलो कुछ बना चलो ये
Continue to provide. Is Jehovah Jireh our provider? And so we we'll tell him, Shaka, will it when you come? Kala de ante by ante. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And David said, I was young and now I'm old. Yet I've never seen God forsaking the righteous, nor his children begging for bread. Is Jehovah Jireh our provider? Shaka Wulilwe, Shaka Wulilwe. Shaka Wulilwe, Nelio Kambo. Ngamulina shoka bulilwe shoka bulilwe nelo kamu ye nelo kamu ngamulina shoka bulilwe shoka bulilwe nelo kamu ye nelo kamu shoka bulilwe shoka bulilwe nelo kamu Shaka Mulila and a combo Shaka Mulila and a combo Come and listen to God. 
Go, 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 go
When you feel like it's not happening, you just say, Shaka Buli Renel Yokambo, Gamli Moine, Abo Masala, Tamakawa Lekeleche, Omo Moita, Tamakawa Shekwamba Buli, Sina Kusungeni, or Celebrate. Celebrate over to our testimony. I am here patiently. I am here patiently. We want to hear our testifiers. Let's see what God has been doing. As they are testifying, I'm excited. Let me just do this celebration. I want to say congratulations to our Copper Queens. We saw Grace after a long time playing again. Celebrate our Copa Queens! We love you and we celebrate you. Over to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Please, you may take your seats. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you happy to be in the presence of the Lord? Yes. From those who God Almighty has delivered, healed, and set free from yesterday's service. 
So if you have a testimony to share, please come forward. My name is my name is Mary Nando. I'm here to testify what the Lord did for me yesterday. Yesterday when I came to the church, I couldn't even walk nicely. I came with a neck collar. I think some of you saw me yesterday. Uh, from November last year, I was suffering from Spinal problem. I was bulging on disc five and six due to falling. So when I came here, the woman of God prayed for me and I got healed instantly. Mm. Celebrate Jesus. The prophetess of God, prophetess Yinka, was going around. She was among the people that the hand of God came upon and she was instantly healed. This is not a story. This is Jesus alive here. Celebrate Jesus. Yes, Jesus is alive. I just used to see other people testifying. But I'm a witness. Today, I came without a neck collar and at home. Every time I go to sleep, I will take some very strong medications for the nerves. Mm. So every time I sleep, I have to take some medication which will make me drowsy so that I don't feel the pain. But I couldn't even sleep. And I was using a special pillow for the neck to support my neck. And every morning I wake up, I have to take the same painkillers. My life was bad. Mm. I come from Western Province, part of Zambia. I came in January. So I have to see my kids from January up now because mm. I couldn't travel back home. Mm. The road is very bad. So every time I just move a short distance, a bumpy road, I'll feel pain, my back, and today you came here without feeling that pain again. And that's why we can see you. Come and celebrate Jesus for that testimony because of time. Today I danced. I danced to the music. Yesterday I couldn't dance. Glory to Jesus. Let us put hands together for Jesus. I advise them to come through. Come. This is the house of God. You are going to receive healing. Whatever problem you have, God will sort it out. He knows you. Amen. Amen. We advise you that you should go and make the word of God the standard for your life. God bless you. Thank you very much. Amen. May your testimony be permanent.
Lord to do something in my life. I've had a problem. I've been miscarrying for so many years. And as the woman of God was praying for people, I she prophesied over my life, and she told me that I'm going to have a baby girl, and I should name her Esther. Amen. So when the woman of God, Prophetess Faith, spoke in your life, she also spoke uh, in the life of your husband. Do you confirm what the woman of God spoke upon your husband yesterday? Yes, it's true. Actually, my husband is there. I think he can come and testify for himself. Amen. 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 I thank God today at the sharp pain in my lip here. Mm. For three days, I couldn't sleep. And the woman of God, Prophet Despair, prophesied to me, you have a sharp pain in your lip. Mm. You have been attacked. Mm. Yes, I was attacked. And we were about to go to the hospital Friday. She mm. told me, let's go to the house of God. God is going to deliver us. I thank God today I'm free. Hallelujah. We give glory to Jesus. And I give God all the glory. Amen. 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 And we receive baby Esther. Amen. 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 So what is your encouragement to the people that are watching all over the world and the people that are in this room? Don't give up on God. Mm. God is able to do everything he has promised to do. Amen. We thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you and may your testimony be permanent in Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. I want to honor the grace for this commission, Prophetess Faith and Prophetess Inka. These are powerful women of God. Uh, what brought me here? I was having a lot of attacks. When I say attacks, it's really attacks. Starting from my children, Last one, the whole house, my business, our career was attacked. But uh, yesterday we came for prayers. We attended, we are seated outside there. Then the women of God, they did some declaration, we received the touch. We went home. When we went home, we, we, we reached home where there was no lights. So I, I started doing some declaration in the house, of which we received and we touched. After moving around with my torch in my phone, I entered in the living room. I just to find a serpent inside the house. Mm. <laughs> the serpent is in my phone. Mm. What a mighty God we serve. So I just want to say thank you, God. Thank you for the grace. Thank you for the anointing. And thank you for preserving our lives. Amen. I know it has been done. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Indeed, God delivers in different ways. Hallelujah. Amen. We came for prayers and the wickedness of the enemy was scattered by fire. Hallelujah. Through the ministration over the women of God that are in this room, she found a serpent and the serpent died. And we believe that the miracles shall begin to overflow. Please let us uh, welcome Sister Bettingandu, the last testifier. <laughs> Betting and do. 
Okay, if she's not in the house, can we please have sister? I just want to give glory to God through the prayers that were taking place yesterday. Looking at the way she came yesterday, she was not feeling well. Her legs were paining. She was feeling her legs heavy. Let us have a chair for Looking at the way she came, she was not feeling well. But looking at this time, at, at this time, I am seeing a different from the way I came. Looking at the way I came through the prayers that happened yesterday, she's managing to even stand a bit on her own. Hallelujah. I think for oh. I thank God for what He has done in my life today. Amen. Amen. May your testimony permanent, Mama. Because of time, I think that is the I will be our last testifier. We have a lot of. Celebrate Prophet Isyanta first. She's in the house. We we'll celebrate her. Uh, we want to celebrate Apostle Stanford Chifita himself, the doctor. He has made it possible that we, we are live right now on also on Revelation TV and other platforms. We celebrate you, sir. Thank you for coming forth. We love you so much. We appreciate God for Mama. My own mother, Mama Bishop Hilda Njovo, she's in the house. Oh, please celebrate her. Such an amazing woman. She came with my Bigoka family. Bigoka remains my family and my home. I appreciate God for each and every one of you. Please celebrate them. I want mommy just to say hi to the people. Please bring mama, bring mama. Ah, and I also saw my sister, Pastor Deborah Tembo, walking in the house. Yesterday we had uh, a prophetess and bishop, Nsonge, uh, they were in the house. We thank God for their lives. Mama, what's your name? Nsonge, Pastor Christ. Amen. Ambuye alipano. Amen. Ule melele wa mulu nguri pano. Amen. Ambuye apitirize kukudari sani. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mama. We love you so much. Hallelujah. All the servants of God that are here, I may not know your names. Sometimes when you are doing something, other people will say, no, because there is that one, because that one, I will not be there. But you did not look at anybody's status or title. You came because of Jesus. Amen. And therefore, the God that we serve, the rewarder of every good thing, may he reward you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All those that have traveled all over to come and be a part of this meeting, I assure you, God is going to answer you. I also stand to declare upon our nation Zambia 
The prophet of God spoke yesterday that God showed her that he's bringing healing in the land. And I pray that everything that was dead in the land of Zambia shall receive life. Shall receive life. In the morning, I spoke about the gold that God showed me for this land. It means Zambia is a blessed nation. But the Lord said that we must walk together. We must be in unity. There's a revival that God is bringing. But we must walk together. Tell your neighbor, can you watch for me? Then I watch for you. If we can watch for each other, there's so much as a nation we are going to achieve. In the next one minute, I want us to pray for the president, the vice president, all the leaders in this land that made the healing that has come upon this land. Let it also go through in all the leaderships. Open your mouth and pray for the nation. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we thank you for the leadership. We thank you for the head of state. We thank you for the vice president because you have put them in those positions. Thank you, my father, for every leader, oh God, that you are raising for this nation. We bless them, father. We pray that they are healed from anything, Lord, that has been holding them back. We speak strength in the name of Jesus. Strength in the name of Jesus. Strength in the name of Jesus. We pray that they will make it. But Zambia, you are blessed. Zambia, you shall go forward. May the hand of the Lord be upon you, Zambia. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. That a man is sleeping. You are not answering like you are a Zambian. Even if you are here, may also your country receive healing. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. That is how we say it here. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We believe that this meeting will bring a great revival to the land. When God sent his prophet in the book of Amos, the Bible says God does not do a thing unless he reveals to his servants the prophets. When I met the prophet of God, I realized God is one. Personally, when the Lord told me to come up with a meeting, my interest was the land. He said the time has come that he wants to do greater things. But he's looking for vessels. He's looking for people that will walk together and they will do greater things. And when the prophetess of God accepted to come, I knew that God is doing something. And therefore, every part of Zambia, it is my prayer. I was telling her that I noticed that few days before the revival, the rains. They said, you know we stayed. Hallelujah. There's a time we were praying for the rain. It came disappear. But I saw that the, the people that detect when it will rain, they strategically or is prophetically, it was arranged that the days we are going to have the meeting, the rain, the rain, the rain. I realized ha, that something was coming. A rebirth was coming. A reproduction was coming. A healing was coming. I tell you, children of God, your life will never be the same again. Tell somebody your life will never be the same again. Where you felt as you walk out of that door, you will become greater. I say you will become greater. I say you will become greater. Wait, Grace and Mommy, you must, you better watch that much. So I came out. When I came out, I was interceding. I saw a go. And I saw their goals being rejected. I said, my father, what is happening? He said, do not worry. In the foreign land, I will announce them. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you are here, you came anywhere, everywhere. Ha <laughs> ha. Wherever you shall go, you shall be announced. I say you shall be announced. 
we are praying that our goalkeeper Hazel is going back. But we celebrate that lady, that one also, she did a good job. But we are praying that our Hazel, Hazel, we love you. Hallelujah. She's going back by fire. She's going back by fire. So it's, 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 uh, I, I told you when I was speaking in their lives that from today I have an interest. Hallelujah. Prophetess is here because she has an interest for Zambia. She has an interest for you. That's why she can go everywhere to touch God's people. It's because she has something in her heart. I'm going to be bringing her such a humble woman. A woman after God's heart. There are some people I don't even like to spend a long time with. But when I look at her and she is speaking, I can see the love of God. I can see the passion for souls. Put your hands together as we celebrate the prophet of God all the way from Nigeria. Prophetess, here Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I know you are wondering, what is she carrying? But you won't see it now. Come on, wave your hand and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Begin to give thanks to God. Begin to worship Him. Begin to adore Him. Begin to give Him all the glory and all the honor. He deserves all our worship. Come on, begin to bless the name of the Lord. Begin to thank him. Thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. Worship him. Come on, adore him. Reverend him. Bow down before him and glorify his holy name. Thank him for what he has done. Come on, thank him for what he's about to do in your life. Thank him for about to put you where you belong. Thank him for the new dream. Thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. In Jesus' mighty name. Yes, you may be seated in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Yes, today by the grace of God. I believe we are in the midst of leaders. And first and foremost, I want to thank God for the opportunity he has given us to be in your midst. I want to thank the men and women of God in the house for your time. Leaders, all protocol observed. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Yes, I believe that the Holy Spirit has a lot for us today. So today I'm not going to preach, but I'm going to share my life experience. And I believe this will bless your life, transform your life like never before. And for those who have been feeling discouraged about the journey of life, maybe in your career, maybe in your ministry, are you a farmer? Are you a professor? A lawyer? An entrepreneur? A businesswoman or a businessman? Or a bishop, a pastor? Maybe you can take something home today. And I believe your life will not remain the same in Jesus' name. Yes, Isaiah 60 says, 61 says, The Spirit of the Lord, God, is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings unto you today. He has sent me to bind all the brokenhearted. I don't know the situation that you are struggling with. But allow me because I'm going to be sharing experience. When I say experience, I'm going to be sharing it. And I believe you have something to take home today. Are you ready? 
How many of us was here yesterday? If you are here, just wave your hand. God bless you. So how many of us are just coming today? You are not here yesterday. You are also welcome. In Jesus' name. Thank you, our sister, for the wonderful worship. God bless your ministry. And I believe that God will take you to a new level in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to tell you that I can see invitation outside Zambia. God is about to take you to another level in your life. You have sown and your harvest is here in the name of Jesus Christ. I release that grace upon your life in Jesus' name. The best is here to come. I know yesterday I was telling um, prophetess that, you know, I feel so sorry for people when they were going back. It was not that easy for them. And then we are sorry for starting late. Actually, we've been here for the past three hours. We are actually waiting for you. You know, many, you know, they, 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 they had services in their churches. And then we understand that uh, people are traveling far. So we have to wait. So we are sorry for the late, uh, we are, we, that we are starting late. And we are actually waiting for you. So, we are sorry you too. Say you are sorry. <laughs> yeah, so thank you. Yes. I want us to take this very short message that says, trust the processing. I believe everybody understands English. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, I don't understand too much English too. So I believe the one I'm speaking, you can hear me. Viewers all over the world, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. I believe today our technical crew, they are able to um, get you sorted and see what is happening here. Yesterday we received a lot of emails, testimonies also from people outside watching. But they also complained that they were not able to watch um, because of a network problem. But we believe today the Holy Spirit got everything covered in Jesus' name. Thank you. Yes, tell your neighbor, trust the processing. You know, a lot of us, we so much concern about the products. But we don't care about the process. Now, turn with me to the book of Luke 19, and let us just take this short passage of the Bible. It's about Zacchaeus. I know many of us know the story of Zacchaeus in the Bible. Turn your Bible to the book of Luke chapter 19, and let's quickly run through what happened there. Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans and he was rich. I believe that this meeting is not for only for pastors. We have some people in government here. We have professors, we have farmers, we have different classes of people. Zacchaeus was just among the crowd like this, a politician's a rich man, but very, very controversial. Stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sacrament tree to see him. For he was to pass that sacrament tree. It was the, Jesus was there to pass the way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him. And said unto him, Zacchaeus, come haste, come down, for today I must abide at their house. I purposely use the verse, the scripture about Zacchaeus, because the Bible made me to understand that there are many people who was there to see Jesus, not only Zacchaeus. There are a lot of people who were there to see Jesus. Also, there were a lot of people who were also short like him. But in his own case, the Bible says, despite his fame, position, popularity, he humbled himself. I 
And when Jesus saw him on top of the sacrament tree, he said, Zacchaeus, come down. Today, I must come to your house. What made Zacchaeus different from the crowd was the process he went through. There are a lot of people who actually want to see Jesus at that particular time, but they were full of pride, impatience, intolerance, lack of self-control, wound them. But in his own position, despite all the odds, a rich man for that matter, though very controversial, but he climbed the tree. Now, when you look at what happened there, what make Zacchaeus' case different from all others is the process he went through. Isn't a, it's not an easy thing to climb the sacrament tree to see Jesus. So today, I will be talking just for 40 minutes or less. I'll be reading and sharing some of my experience because I believe God has sent me to somebody here today. I know there are many people that are, you've been going through issues in your life. You've been going through a lot of discouragement. Shame, reproach, setback in ministry, in them. It is true that many today are yearning to be leaders. But they neglect the processing to be a leader. The process of what you become in life is more important than the success itself. We say leader. Of course, everyone aspires to be a leader. But how many people are ready to go through the thin and thick of life to be a leader? Sometimes you see people, we aspire to be like them because we love the grace of God in their lives. But look for them. Take time to ask. They will tell you that the road wasn't easy. It takes endurance. I don't know this. As in this nation, If you are ready to follow the processing. When I'm saying leader, it could be in your field. Maybe you're a farmer. Also, God wants to anoint you today. You see, I'm here with something today. God spoke to my heart to bring the anointing oil. And that anointing oil, when it touch your life, everything in your life will expand. Be it in your ministry, maybe you say in your finance or your profama. I have a lot of, I, I believe God, the spirit of God will, take, will let us take it one by one. Because I have some messages for you today. Because we are not just here to touch you. We also want to leave something. That is what the Spirit of God said. To leave something behind. So that you can also be a blessing to generations upon generations. Amen. Many people, when you look at the young ones today, many young to be leaders. It's a good thing. But we, many people neglect the process. The process is of what you become is more important than success itself. Many ask God for products, but not the process. If you know some software developer, ask them to bring a product out that went through a lot of processes. Have you ever seen a successful product without a processing? Now, ask any successful person in the world 
You say Big Gate, Facebook, you name them. Even a nation, Zambia, ask any successful person in the world. And they will tell you, it takes a process to be who Trust the process. Look here. Trust the process. Many of us fail to realize that the process is what helps us to maintain the stones. The vicissitude of life. I mean the ups and down of life. For God to fulfill the promise in the life of Joseph... And for him to be a prime minister, he went through a lot of processes. Just imagine. A lot of processes from the dry pit into slavery. From slavery into Potiphar's wife's hands. Then into prison. Was that a smooth journey? It's a process. For David, the little shepherd boy, to become the king. Take your time to read your Bible. I know you have read through all this. That is why I'm just making references to them. They went through processing. I believe today, by the grace of God, if God gives us the grace, we are going to ask I mean, have a time for question and answer. Ask me question. And I believe the Spirit of God will answer you. Because I want you to go home with something today. When you look at a lot of people that hit lottery, processing, too different between somebody who got, who just won a jackpot, a lottery. Compared to somebody who really struggled to make something, the difference will be the process because the person that won the lottery can easily spend the money in due time and finish it because he doesn't even understand. He never suffer. But somebody who suffer, when that blessing hit his hand, do you know how, how he's going to guide it? That is process. The story tells us that he went through a series of failures throughout his life, born into poverty. Lincoln faced a lot of difficulties. He could have quit many times. But what happened? He didn't. He said he didn't quit. He became one of the greatest presidents America has ever seen. Ready to endure. Because success is not for those who quit. It's only for those who endure. Now, many great leaders suffered a lot of isolation. You complain that nobody loves you. Many great leaders suffer setbacks. Even in your business, a lot of failure. You are not the first person that will ever experience such. 
Say, ah, I don't want to be persecuted. Then you don't want to be a leader. I don't want somebody to hate me. Then you don't want to be, you don't want to be a leader. I want people to love me or let them praise me and I praise I want. Then you are far from being a leader. You don't want people to intimidate you. Then you are far from being a leader. You don't want insults, maybe from your boss. Then you are far from being a leader. Even you have been lied against. If you don't want those things, then you are far from being a leader. Sometimes, many a times, God allows people to hate you. God allow people in life to hate you, to speak against you, sometimes for the purpose of your tomorrow. Because if people love you at this time that you are struggling, that you are trying to get there, you are not rich there. But that lies and hate will isolate you, keep you, reserve you for what God wants to do for you. This is my life experience. You that is crying that no one loves me. You that is crying that no one loves me. Even the good I do is done bad. If everyone accepts you now, you will lose your focus of being what you want to be. So if you want to go far in life as a farmer, if you want to go far in life as a professor, if you want to go far in life as a business person or pastor, deacon, apostle, or you are just coming up as a servant. If you want to go far in life, train your heart to accept lies. saying about me. Tell your neighbor, it doesn't matter what you think about me. It doesn't matter what you think about me. It doesn't matter what I think about you. But what matters is what God's saying about me. So train your heart to accept pain, even if it comes from those whom you trust. Train your heart, brethren, to accept insults, to accept persecution, to accept rejection, even when it comes from those whom you love. Joseph trained his heart to accept the pain, even when it came from his siblings from the same blood. He accepted it. Oh, why should he be my own brother, my own brother, my own sister? God can choose anybody to train you. To provoke that leadership in you. You can be the last child in the house and yet God can use you to lead the family. Joseph was the least among the children of Israel. But he trained his heart to accept the hate from his brothers. There are some qualities that you must understand that you need to be a great leader. 
Joseph trained his heart to accept the hate, even though it came from those he loved. He accepted it. He knew for God to call him and made him what he wants him to be, that won't happen in the warm harm of his family. There is something we call warm harm and cold harm. The warm harm is in your house where you receive pets. Even if your brothers are fighting, your mom is there to calm you. But the cold harm will be in outside the house where you will face necessary lesson. He knew that first he must accept his heart to take the pain. He realized that for him to be what God wants him to be, that would not happen in the warm harm of his parents that he had to venture into the cold arm of the society. So when it came that he was sold into slavery, he accepted it. He accepted it. Let's always say, train your heart to accept pain. Train your heart to accept insults. No, I don't want them to insult me. Oh. Is it because I'm serving them? Why should they insult me? Is it because I'm doing this? Uh, no, not be Mickey Jesus. Uh, no, 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 I can't face this. No, I can't. Small thing. You started talking. You can talk, talk, talk. The whole ground will fall. Small insults. You start, maybe somebody did something that you, you, don't, you don't expect. You start talking. But learn today to train your heart to accept insults. Even though it comes from those whom you love. Are you going through some hard times in your leadership journey? Are you going through a tough time? Whatever might be the situation you are going through, those insults, lies, delay, failure, are the transit process that we are talking about. You know, when you take a flight and there are some flights that you have that can go straight from where you are straight to where you are going. And there are some that you have to take some transit. Maybe because of the expense or something you have to. But of course, the difference is the process. But I want you to do that. No matter the situation you are right now, if you are called to be a leader tomorrow, what you are going through right now means that you are in your transit process. Because transit process means that you are about to break loose. That is why I'm telling you what you need to maintain what you are about to receive. If you are in a deep level, God is about to take you to a deeper level. In the name of Jesus Christ. And if you are in a deeper level, he will take you to the deepest level in your relationship with him, in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, whether you're a servant or you're a leader, if no one is mocking you at the moment, if nobody is talking bad about you, it means you are not a leader or you cannot be a leader. If nobody at the moment is talking, is not talking bad against you, that means you cannot, or you don't have the quality of being a leader. Because no one throws a stone to a fruitless tree. Those insults, they are thrown. They are stone. Lies. 
a stone. No one throw a stone through a fruitless tree. So rather accept that pain now. Because God is taking you through process. If you say no, ah, I make sure that nobody insults me. I make sure that no, I'm, that means something is missing in your life. You don't have that fruit of a leader. Because a leader, you will offend people. But you will be in good time with God. Many will say, but woman of God, you're talking about being a leader. I want to discover myself. Of course. It's a good thing to discover yourself. Because many people that are busy pursuing someone else's goal for themselves. Today, I pray that you will discover yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sometimes you see some people preach and say, no, I want to be a pastor. Are you called? You could serve under a ministry and tomorrow God can make you to be a politician. A powerful politician. You could serve under a I know of many people that my mentor trained. Even some are not pastor, but they are doing well in their own offices. Their office, their ministry. Being a lawyer is a ministry. A farmer. The, even some, the richest people in southern part, they are farmers. So it's a ministry. So be careful not to pursue someone else's goal for yourself. Make sure you discover yourself. Because when you discover yourself and you pursue it, even they insult you, your heart will accept it because you are going somewhere. But when you are pursuing someone else's goal, you will even leave it. I'm tired, I beg. What's going happen? I'm tired. What's going happen? No, 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 no. That is too much. You will be tired because you are not called for it. If you are called for it, you will stand. Make sure today, as you are listening to me, ask God, I want to discover myself. Am I really pursuing what you have called me to do? I hope I'm not pursuing someone else's goal for myself. You to be maybe a leader or a counselor. You to be maybe a leader or a counselor. I'm telling you, you will prosper by it. So many are saying, you know, man, woman of God, that's the reason why I even came. I'm not sick. I just want you to tell me. I want to. You know, I want to discover myself. Yes. Finding out about who you are might take time, no doubt. It's a process. It's okay to say at the moment, I don't know. It's okay to say, well, I'm so sick in the face of God. Because many people today, they build on camouflage. Do you know what I mean? Pretending to be what they are not. And that is even dangerous. Many people build on camouflage. They can have some business card that they don't, that business never exists. If, when they are still on the way. Tell your neighbor, it's all about processing. It is okay to be you. Be you. Tell your neighbor, it is okay to be you. Be you. Don't copy that person. Be you. 
Because the spirits of the living God will speak to your heart what to do if you allow him. I know sometimes you find yourself to do some things. You'll be afraid. But people doesn't. But if God has called you to do that, then do it. Because God is speaking to you. There is this saying that said, you who love to hear more from people will hear less from God. You want to hear a lot from people, but you will hear less from God. So Zacchaeus being a rich man that climbed the tree to see Jesus, he had an incredible way to see Jesus. The process he went through brought about the great salvation to his household. Brethren, I want you to understand one thing today. The slow success build character. It looks as if it is not working. Trust the process. Even though you fail, there is something that God wants you to learn at that particular time. When you try it again, you do better than yesterday. That is what I call process. The road to your success will always teach you humility. Failure teaches us a lot of things. We are humble. We are humble by it because oh, but what, what? it's teaching us something. Because they are essential tools for success. As I said, there's going to be an oil, anointing oil, over your life today. And if you have not discovered yourself, some may be anointing to go and preach the gospel. Maybe some will be anointing for business, but make sure you discover yourself. Don't pursue someone else's goal for your life. Tell your neighbor, say, don't pursue someone else's goal. Don't imitate people. Because faith cannot be imitated. It has to come from your heart. Someone can call me and say, you know how I managed to get through? I fasted for three days, like this, like that, and happen. If you do the same, it may not work for you. So faith cannot be imitated. It must arise in each person's heart through the living word of God. That is why I said, make sure you do not pursue someone else's goal for your life. Maybe you are thinking, oh, but this is a difficult thing now. I need to understand my goal first. Today, when you receive that anointing, whether you are a lawyer, even in your law firm, you are an ambassador for Christ. Do you know that? The lady that was singing here, she was speaking something to people's life. That is our ministry. I've seen several people that they gave their life to Christ, even while listening to the word of the, the gospel, the music. They are saving soul. I pray, whichever field that God will put you from today, will win soul for Christ Jesus. Whichever field that you will be, whether being a business person, a politician, a businessman, a woman, farmer, professor, lawyer, teacher, doctor, whichever field, whatever ministry that God will put in your hand today, it will give honor and glory to the name of Jesus Christ. And it will give glory to God in the name of Jesus Christ. Your capacity to believe this must be strong. You must have a strong belief. Your capacity right now must be strong 
to accommodate and attract all these privileges I'm talking about. I can't do that for you. You must have a strong capacity to accommodate all the blessings that God has in stock for you today. So, if you realize maybe that your capacity to receive today is not strong enough, you can begin to meditate in your heart. Just as the father of the demon-possessed boy says, Lord, I do believe your words. Help me. Give me the grace to discover myself. Begin to think about that in your heart. I need to discover myself. I know today being the 14th of April will make a radical transformation in my life. Begin to meditate that in your heart. Say, Lord, I do believe your words. Help me. I don't want to pursue someone else's goal. Because I believe that the Spirit of God is moving right now in our midst. Now, I want you to turn your Bible quickly to the book of Acts 10. This morning I received this passage. It's about Cornelius. You know, sometimes when we say leader, that is why we are, we are careful. My servant, uh, Prophetess Faith, we said, no, we don't want to use the word pastor's meeting. We want to use the word leaders. Because sometimes we get things wrong and say, oh, maybe the meeting is only for leaders. It's only for pastor. Oh, it's pastor's meeting. No, it's leaders in all areas of life. Now, turn your Bible to the book of Acts 10. Now, this Cornelius man here is not a pastor. But listen to what happened to him. And that is what is going to happen to you today. If you open your heart, you will receive that anointing to break every yoke of stagnation, limitation in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I say by the mercy of the Lord, I declare and prophesy to your life that today you will receive that anointing. Viewers all over the world, this time is not the barrier. The only thing that will limit you from not receiving right now is the state of your heart. Anyway, you are listening, listening to me right now. Just believe that today, by the mercy of the Lord, you will receive that Holy Ghost, that Holy Spirit, that anointing that will break every yoke in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. And you will walk into the promised land in Jesus' name. Turn your Bible to Acts 10. There was a certain man named there was a certain man in Kesra called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devoted man, and one that feared God with all his household, which gave much arms to the people. Remember, he's not a pastor, but he's just a man that fear God and help people. He blessed people. He was known for that. Now, he saw in a vision Evidently, about night hour of the day, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked to him, he was afraid and he said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy hands are co have come up to the Lord. Meaning that whatever you have been doing, that you are doing in the secret that nobody sees, helping, love, care, today it has come up to the Lord. Amen. The angel of the Lord told him, Cornelius, look, everything you have been doing, the sacrifice that you have been making, 
helping people to do this, to do that. It has come up to the Lord. And when he looked, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And the voice said to him, Thy prayer and the hounds have come for a memory, memorial before God. And now send your boys, your workers, send them to a certain place to meet a man called Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodged with one Simon, a trainer, whose house is by the sea. Verse 9, because of time. On the morning, as they went to the journey, the people that Cornelius sent, as they went on the journey, Peter went up upon the first step to pray to the Lord at the sixth hour. And he became very hungry. And he would have eaten. He hasn't eaten anything. But while they were making him food, he fell in a trance. You see, the Spirit of God is one. And he saw heavens appeared. That is Peter now, that the servant of Cornelius were coming to meet. But before the servant would get to Peter, the Lord showed to him. He saw the heaven appears, and a certain sorry, he saw this, he saw the heaven appears, and a certain vessel depending upon him, as it had been a great sheet, kneeled at the four corner and knelt down to the head, wherein were all manners of foot-footed beasts of the head, and wild beasts and the crippled things. And falls of the air. And when there came, a voice said to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. You see, sometimes this passage tells me about a lot of things about dreams. Many a times we misinterpret dreams. And you know, God oftentimes speaks to us in proverb. He saw something that is creeping. And he heard a voice, Kill and eat. He said, No, I can't eat. This is unclean. I'm not going to eat it. Now hear what the voice of the Lord said to him. He said, What God has cleaned, you that thou common. He said, and the voice of the Lord said to him again, second time, what God has cleaned that you call that common. This was done twice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now, while Peter doubted himself, what this division mean? He has seen she mean. Behold, the men that Cornelius sent, they were just by the door waking up while he woke up from the trance. And then when they came to him, they told him, Look, we have from the great servant, a public man, Cornelius want to see you. But because of the dream he had, because being a Jew, to visit a person like that will be unholy. But God was speaking to him. Don't call what I've called holy, unholy. So Peter did what? He went and followed them. And the Bible tells us when you read because of time, when he got to the house of Cornelius, Cornelius explained, this is what happened. I also saw the vision. And that is how you came. But before he came, Cornelius has called some people to gather. And the Bible says, while Peter was ministering, the Spirit of God came upon the people. They were not pastor. They were not deacon. The Spirit of God fell upon everyone that were there. There were different people there. Maybe pastor, business, servants, whoever, just like we are here. When Peter came and he began to speak, when you read down the Bible, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord rests upon them. So I don't know your profession. But what I believe today is that whatever may be your profession, the Spirit of the Lord will rest upon you today. And when it does, your life will change. 
your situation will change. Everything. That you might have lost in the past. You shall regain them today in the name of Jesus Christ. Without the Holy Spirit, man will walk without direction. Without the Holy Spirit, you will walk without direction. Cornelius has been planting seed, helping people, showing love, care, saving. But you must understand, for those who have been serving in one way or the other, we don't plant a seed today and harvest it the next day. You don't plant a seed today and harvest it the following day. Those seeds develop in stages. Just like what happened to Cornelius. He was just doing what God has called to him to do. He loved God. He trusts God. He feared God. He, he honored God. At the same time, give hands. But the Bible says his prayer and what he has been doing caught up to God. And when God sent Peter to come to minister to them, Holy Spirit fell upon those who were in that room. You can imagine he's been sowing seed. He's been planting seed. That seed did not just germinate or harvest the following day. They develop in stages. There is time for you to plant. Are you in your planting time right now? There is also a time to harvest what you have planted. Even though you may not believe, keep trusting. It will harvest one day. Now, when it comes to believe, it's like a seed as well. When it comes to believe, believing your dream is also a seed. There has to be a time to receive. There must be a time to believe and a time to receive. If you believe it, you will receive it. What is your belief? Make sure they are in alignment with God. You will not have the manifestation immediately, like I said to you. But once your seed is planted, surely harvest will come. Time to plant is a time to serve. Maybe you are under a ministry at the moment. You are planting. You are sowing a seed. Meaning, you are serving. Maybe you are under a certain person you respect so much. You learn from. You are serving. That time you are planting your seed is your seven time. And time to invest is the time to enjoy the proceed of your seven. Cornelius planted and reap spiritual harvest. I don't know the situation that you have been going through. I know you've been doing a lot. Many are like Cornelius in our midst. But I pray that God in his infinite mercy will grant you the grace to receive that spiritual harvest today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Meaning that the good deed that you have done, they are not lost. We all know the story of Mordecai. 
God rewarded him when he needed it the most. I pray for you today in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord reward every sweat of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord supply your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ. When I was planting as a young girl, seven, little did I know this will be the harvest. I was not serving because I want to be a prophetess. I was serving because I love God. And I love the good work of God I'm seeing in the life of my mentor. I, for one, I don't know of somebody. I can only speak for myself. I don't go to, to the ministry of prophecy because I want to be a prophetess. I want to serve with all my heart because I love God. So when you will be seven, as you are seven right now, it is God that will choose you to make you what you want to be. Because I don't choose him. He chooses me. I don't choose to be a prophetess. In fact, when I'm hearing people saying, men of God, women of God, I fear for my life. Because I know it's a big responsibility from God. It's not why I said, make sure you don't pursue someone else's goal for your life. Sometimes when I find myself in the midst of leaders or somebody who, you know, is just worried and pain and all that, I look at my life and I want to try as much as possible to lift them up with my life experience. I didn't go to serve because... I had vision or looked, okay, I will be a prophetess in so, so, so years. No. I keep serving. That's what I want to advise you. Whatever God has put you, keep doing what God has called you to do from all your heart. The rewarder is coming. Because God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And as John 15 says, I don't choose him. God choose me. If God give me, let me just share a small thing. I know there will be a bigger event that I will explain full. I remembered it got to a time because for years I've been serving behind the scene. Even some people say they don't even know Yinka. Only those people who have visited will say, oh, I've seen that sister. Oh, I've seen her when I came on stage to start ministering because I was always behind the scene. By the grace of God, I've traveled every, most of the places with my mentor to serve. And I do that with all my heart. And I love it. I enjoy it. I was telling prophetess that, look, when I see people, I understand what they have been through. Because I know that I'm also coming from somewhere. That was why when I saw the crowd outside yesterday under the canopy, I said, no. The Spirit of God spoke to me. He said, no, go to them and attend to them first. Then you can come back here and continue. May the name of the Lord be praised in Jesus' name. Now, I want you to open your Bible quickly. So the book of John 15, before I will continue. There is something I want to share with you, which each time I remember, it becomes a dream and revelation to myself. John 15, let's quickly read. I will take it from verse 14. I'll just read just three, three passages there. John 15 from verse 14. Now, Jesus is speaking here. He says, Ye are my friends. If ye do whatever, I command you. Henceforth, I call you not servants. 
for the servant knoweth not what his Lord God. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. That was my case. And ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you that you love one another. Take your time and read this. This is a word for you. Because God is calling you today, a friend, to take all of the instruction and righteousness. Then, whatsoever you do, shall prosper. When I say, I did not choose him, he chose me. I remember one day, When the prophet called the two prophets and they started ministering, he called me. You go and join them. I was afraid. I ran. I should go to the mountain and resume immediately. I'll just quickly just talk, talk some more about it. I was afraid. I said, to join these two prophets, you know them. One of them was from Europe and one of them is an African man. That I should go and join two of them. I should first go and resume at the mountain. I ran away. There is a department we call maintainers department in the church where, you know, you supervise a lot of things. I will run there very early so that I will not be able to see the prophet because I don't want him to tell me, go and resume at the mountain to join the prophets because God is calling me. He told me, he said, look, Anointing you is not from me, it's from God. If it is something that I should do by myself, maybe I would have chosen somebody else, but it is God. So, so, I should go and join the two men that have resumed to take the mantle of the prophet. I was afraid. I was like a Jonah. I ran. Fear gripped me for months. Because it's like now it is time that it should happen. Because he's been telling me for years that this will happen. But I was like, mm. a father would love to encourage all children. A father that have many children would love to encourage children. But when this time comes, it was so strong. Go and do this. This is God's instruction. I was afraid. I ran away. Until one day, maybe evangelist here, Evangelist, um, when he can, Olap Muson can bear me witness. Until one day, because the Holy Spirit wants to arrest me in full force, that very day, the man of God called all the evangelists that everybody should go to the mountain. At this point, I have to go. Because everybody is asked now to go. You know, I want all of you to go and have some quiet time at the mountain. I know if for somebody who has been to the mountain before will understand what I'm talking about. I want all of you to go inside the bush there and continue to pray. At this point, I have no excuse. Because I've been making excuses. Oh, sorry, sir. Uh, I was, uh, the job you gave us to do something. So I was doing it. Okay. Okay. But that very day, I had no excuse. Every evangelist they brought the coaster bus. Take all these people, men and women, take them to the mountain. At that point, I have no other excuse. I have to go. And as I was going, I remember that very day, the voice. He told me, and as you are going right now, pack your things and resume at the mountain. So, I have to now resume at the mountain to start the prayer and get ready for the new assignments. 
And I remember some of my sisters were saying, oh, we were looking for you. We were at, like after, some, after a long time that they started seeing me, like after they didn't see me for like some times before they saw me in the church ministry, they said, we were looking for you. That ah, All of us came. One person is still remaining. I said, ah, you won't understand my sister, but this is my story. I am not saying this because I am perfect. I'm saying it because it is pure grace of God. Not the works of righteousness. Please do it with all your heart. And serve faithfully. Don't think about who take the credit. Because that's one of the problems we have. We, of, we oftentimes think about who takes the credit. Oh, I'm serving. Oh, nobody. I'm supposed to be the one to as your vessel unto honor. In which in the field you have put me. Even as a leader, give me the grace to lead in righteousness. Give me the grace to serve my people in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray with the words of your mouth and the meditation of your heart be acceptable in the sight of our God, our Lord, our Redeemer, in Jesus' name. Can I hear you say amen? Amen. Before I will summarize five major points for you to observe in your journey, let's open the floor for question and answer. If you have a question... Make sure your question will be able to help people. Make sure the question you are asking, ask the Spirit of God to speak through you. Don't just ask because you feel like you want to ask. Let the Holy Spirit guide your heart. In Jesus' name. If you have a question, raise up your hand. And then we will bring the mic to where you are to save the time. Tell us your name, where you're from, and let us hear your question. Your, your, your question. Hello, madam. Where are you going? Where are you going? I've not seen hand. I need to see hand. Okay. So raise your hand. So she, you are not going there. You are going to the back there. So there's a man there that first raised his hand at the back there. So give it to him. We will not come to my sister here. Just keep your hand on so that they can get you. As you are listening, begin to speak to your heart. Holy Spirit, speak through me. Because your question must be able to impact lives. Don't ask for classic, selfish, and material reason. Ask for salvation of soul. When I say salvation, I mean something somebody would learn from. And say, oh, this is something that I also want to ask. Because we cannot listen to everybody. But I believe by the time we listen to three to four, we will take the question that is in the heart of everybody. Thank you, ma'am. My name is Timmy. I'm from the United Kingdom. Uh, my question is, in the process of being made right uh, through the Holy Spirit, you would find that there are people that would come to you and ask you for prayer ask so that you pray for them. And most of them are business people that probably do in alcohol. Or somebody says, come to me, pray for me so that I win the lottery. With such a situation at your hand, what would be your approach as a child of God? Would you pray for somebody who seeks sort of divine intervention in a business that deals in alcohol? I seek your guidance on that. Thank Sorry, you. Sorry, take it again and tell us who you are. Please, when you're talking about your name, tell us what you do. If you're a minister of God, let us know. If you're a business person, let us know. Okay? So start again, sir. Your name and what? Let us know you better than your question. My name is Brad Timmy. I'm from the United Kingdom. I'm a veteran. I used to save in the armed forces moment I'm self-employed. So my question was, as you go through the process of being mentored to become a leader or let's say a pastor, you will meet situations whereby somebody's going to ask you to pray for them and the thing that they're asking you to pray for them, let's say, is a business that deals in alcohol. As a child of God, what's your approach to that? I seek guidance on that. Thank you. Let us clap for our brother. There 
But many at times we get things wrong when it comes to prayer. Our brother, number one, is not a pastor. He said, is a he served in the army, right? Not a pastor, but a leader in the army, right? Okay. And some fellow comes for prayer. You don't have to pray for them. But God has given you a word to speak to their life. Your word at that time could transform and deliver them. There are a lot of people that have tempted Satan to tempt them. That somebody comes to you to be prayed for might not necessarily be that you pray for them. Look at the case of Cornelius. God opened his heart to seek a man of God. Even when Peter came to his house, he saw people because Cornelius was a man of people. And as Peter began to minister the word of God, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, healed them. You know what it means when the Holy Spirit fell upon you? He will heal you, deliver you, set you free. Those that need anointing, if you give them, this, that, that, to give them. So when somebody approaches you, it could be because you are seen in a vision and the Spirit of God pushed the person to you. Speak the word of God. Because in the word of God, there is deliverance. In the word of God, there is salvation, healing. Be careful not to raise your hand. In such cases, preach the word. You will be surprised how God will affect your world to transform their life. And by doing so, you have won a soul for Christ. So do not be tempted. Because I've seen many people that the problem they are having is the problem of somebody they prayed for. Because they are not called for it. When God called you for a service, it make you fit for it. So I believe I've answered your question. Yes, you have. God bless you, my brother. You, my God bless you. So I believe that that question is the question of about 20 to 30 percent of our people here. And I believe you have learned from that. So thank you. God bless you. Good afternoon. My name is Alphon Benji, and I'm a business owner. I also serve as a deacon in the church. My question would be around what you spoke on earlier, around the process, and how that leads to leadership. And you described that the process can be difficult, it can be trying, it can be really hard and lonely. How do you then differentiate uh, affliction or persecution from the process. How do you differentiate? Affliction or persecution from the process. So if I'm going through a situation, would I assume this is uh, the process to my leadership or I would be able to identify that as an affliction or persecution? Thank you. Let us clap for our sister. Now, when we're talking about situations that leads to your processing, there is, so, there is one that is man-made. And there is one that is God-made. Sometimes your attitude, your behavior can cause that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a situation where you have done nothing wrong, but people just hate you for no reason. But you keep doing what God has called you to do. Even you serve. You just, but you know, there are some things that you would do that you are actually wrong. That one is different. I don't know if I've answered your question. You see, you are serving in a ministry as a deacon, a businessman, because I know that as a businesswoman, you could be given a responsibility in the house of God. No doubt about that. But now in this case, there could be some things that happens that is a process. Because serving in the house of God, the reward that is coming you are doing something. God will reward you. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So if you are insulted or you are lied against for something you know nothing about, of course it's a process. Because God allows it to happen so you can learn some valuable lesson 
of life. It's different for someone that is a trouble person. It causes confusion everywhere in the church. And is a worker. Is that one a process? So such a person will need deliverance. We need prayer to be able to calm. Do you understand what I'm saying, man? God bless you. So let's take one or two more. Okay. The woman in glasses wearing white. Uh, maybe after that we'll stop. I believe we still have some people outside who are waiting for prayer. Do we have any? We have people outside. Evangelist, please, can you help us to check? Do we have people outside? Good morning and good today. I'm very grateful for the opportunity. My name is Tongo Mushibi. I'm, I'm Mrs. Luwawa. I'm a banker. I work for First National Bank. So my question maybe may be a little bit far-fetched from what we've learned about the process and also um, living our dream and not imitating the dreams of others. So what I wanted to find out is I myself, uh, a person that wants to see others lifted. So what I would normally do is to encourage people, encourage people in the things of the spirit, encourage people also to, to um, you know, like consult with those individuals who are, who are of influence in our institution for projects and whatever so that they can also be seen and also be known. But then I myself do not have the courage to do that. So what I wanted to find out was how can I overcome that fear to, to go and also just inquire about myself being lifted. Thank you. Clap for our sister. Thank you so much. We are going to watch you. That is just where we are going right now before we call it a day. What you have learned today, that is why I said write what you have learned today. And if you have not written anything, try and go back to the video and listen. Because there are leaders here that do have a lot of people under you. You are going back home to teach them something. And let me tell you, fear is one of the things that you are going to go through in your journey of success. So you are on the right track. I went through it. I went through fear. If you would tell me 21 years ago or over 20 years ago that I'm going to stand to be talking, I would say no because I fear to face people. So if you are one of those, there is hope for you. I remember one time when I was in Ghana in 2023. 20, 2003, sorry, just before 2004 that I came to Cape Town to represent the, the man of God. In Ghana, we went for holiday. It's a very short story, which I believe will help you, my sister, and those who suffer the same situation of fear. In 2003, in 20, the prophet called us. That time we are we are quite numbers of people, like ten or fifteen that we should go to the branch in Ghana and also take it as part of holiday because you no, know, we've worked hard and let us just go and have some rest. So we went to church to church in Ghana. There was a pastor there then who was in charge in Ghana. It was a, like a big man, I mean is a very, very elderly man. So we all went for holiday. After the holiday, that is why you must understand one thing. When there is a mark on your life, God will continue the process. If you need strength, it will strengthen you. If you are stammerer, I was a stammerer. For those who say, oh, I start tall. I don't, if, even before I called you, I said, J -j 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 -j. some people are like that. Let me tell you, when God wants to affect your life, he will turn your tongue. And you, your voice will be a voice for him. I was a stammerer. I'm telling you this so that you can have faith that God is working out the best for you. We went to Ghana 20, 2003, about 21 years ago now. 
just for holiday and also be in the church, you know. We're... So after like a week or two, the prophet, with gentle soulless and perfect peace, says people should come back to Lagos. We are all happy. You know, when you find yourself, you are many, you are a group of people, you go to a branch, there is no, you are not the main focus. Everybody run and do the whole job together. So we're like a crowd doing things together. But at this point, the prophet asks everybody to come back to Lagos and I shall remain. The pastor there then was Pastor Ben, was there. And I was like, if I'm staying with this pastor in this church, he'll be giving me some assignment to do. I was afraid. I said, no, let me go back to Lagos. We are plenty. If it is one job like this, at least we have five people doing it. It will not be only me. But in this case, staying with this man <laughs> will be a challenge. I was afraid. Stay there. I stayed. You know, in Ghana branch there, they used to have meetings during the week, several meetings. <laughs> this man will do all the meetings, women meetings, nothing more that he's the one doing, he's a pastor. One day, I was called by the prophet from Lagos that this meeting coming next, you are the one to address people. I was afraid. So God prepares his people ahead of time. I have to begin to pray. I say, God, to address people, I don't think I can do it, but I know with your strength, I can. The prophet said, you can do it. Go to that crowd and speak to them. It was not on TV. It's Tuesday's meeting. I will address those women. And I started seeing God started building confidence. My fear turned to faith. And I'm telling you, if you are struggling with maybe fear or doubt, you're on the tr right track of your leadership. It happens. All you need to do is just to ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen you. And he will do it. Now, I have five major things that I want to summarize for you to observe in your journey of success. And I want you to write these five things down. One of them is love. Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? In the book of John chapter 21 verse 17. This shows that the essence of effective ministry, I don't know the ministry God has given to you, the essence of effective ministry will always be an overflow of our relationship, our love relationship with Jesus. Do you love God? Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Because the love you claim you have may be conditional one. I'm talking about unconditional love. You love him because of what he gives. Or do you love him because of who he is? It's two different things. I will summarize this. The quality of love is essential, brethren, in discovering your true potential in life. True love. Because the love of God will, will make you to love others, not to even hurt others. The love of Christ will make you to love people. You will even be afraid because you know that what you do to others is what you do to, to God. The quality of love is essential in discovering your true potential. It is only through love that we can respond to God and others at present. Do you love God? You can know if you love God by the way you treat others around you. If you are asking yourself, yeah, I, I, I love God. Oh, it's too early to answer that question. When you examine yourself by the way you treat people, you will know whether you love God. Two. Choose your friend with care. I don't know. I've listened to Banker. 
I've listened to a man from the UK, a military man, and I've listened to a business woman here, also a deacon. Whatever ministry that God has given you, choose your friend with care so that you don't become who they are. Always remember that there are four categories of people in your life as a friend. Those who come to add to the grace of God in your life. Those who come to multiply the grace of God in your life, which you need, of course. And there are other people who come to support the grace of God in your life. They come to divide the grace of God in your life. So choose with care. This journey, you will meet them. Many have fall. Many are supposed to be there. They can't because of this class of people. Like I said, I'm going to summarize everything. But when I say this, you understand where I'm going. Number three, be prayerful. I remember there was one time like that that somebody, a woman, she's from South Africa. I don't know her name, but she's a pastor's wife. Uh, there was a time that um, we had the grace to be speaking to some people when the prophet gave us that we can speak to them. The woman was, she's a pastor's wife. She was having a lot of challenges. And then she called me. She said, woman of God, you know, this, 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 this. And I told her, I said, look, when you wake up in the middle of the night to pray, I mean, to, you wake up in the middle of the night, you go to the toilet. You think God wake you because you want to go to the toilet. God has woke you because he wants you to pray. There are many a times you wake up in the middle of the night. You think, oh, I wake up to the toilet. Before you go back on that bed, pray to God because he has called you for something that he wants to show you. Sometimes we give a special time for prayer. I say, you say, I don't hear. God wants to talk to you. He wants to talk to you. And so I would advise you in your journey. If you wake up four times to toilet, pray four times. Because by the time you offer that prayer before you sleep, I'm telling you, believe me, it's a life testimony. God will reveal something to you. What will happen? God will show you. You say, ah, but I want, I want to know, I want to have prophecy, I want to know something. But God has been speaking to you. You refuse to hear. He called you. But you can't hear. Because you are busy in your slumber. Viewers all over the world, when you wake up in the middle of the night to pray, I mean, to, to, to go to toilet, your bathroom, whatever name you call it, if you woke up to go to bathroom, God don't wake you because of that bathroom. He called you to speak to him so that he can talk to you. When you do this, I'm telling you, you will see things happening. Because I know that God always wants to talk to his children. A prayerless home is a godless home. Challenges, failures should draw you nearer to God. We've talked about that. Number four, we've talked about love. We have talked about prayer. And we've talked about choose your friend with care. And number four here will be Beware of pride. Pride. P-R-I-D-E. You hear me right. <laughs> Mama, the woman said pride. Yeah, now pride I call them. Pride. Beware of pride in your journey. Whether you are a leader, beware of pride. A servant, beware of pride. Pride. 
Because pride, adding our heart, and these our highs of understanding, it distorts visions. Do you think God walked with a pride heart? Do you think God walked with a pride heart? Saul was once a servant of God. But when pride fell upon him, he became shadowed of himself. Pride hardened the heart and deemed our highs of understanding. Distort vision. A leader with those quality cannot lead in the fear of God. You want to lead. The woman there, a banker, has a lot of people. Even, remember, while you are serving people, you are serving God. Because those people, is like God you are serving. So serve them, not with pride. Because pride will keep you from dealing with the truth. One way the enemy keep a person in offended state is to keep an offense hidden with pride. Number five, fear. A time will come that you will be struggling with fear of unknown. This responsibility, how will I do it? How will I? They asked me to talk. When God called you for a service, he make you fit for it. Just follow that word. Go. Before you get there, what you will say, he will give you to say. We will let God transform you by the power of the Holy Ghost. He will, in fact, literally begin to change the way you think, the way you talk. The way you act. God can accomplish great things through suitable people who are willing to be led by him. The question is, are you ready to allow him to lead you? Because many today are led by senses and they claim they are led by the spirit of God. Many people are led by senses. They don't go by what they see. They just go by what they hear. They just go by what they feel. Oh, I feel. No, you don't feel it. You must allow the Spirit of God to lead you. Because God can choose anyone to lead his people. Young or old. Woman or man. Educated or uneducated. Professor or farmer. But I want to encourage you. Do not let prejudice get in the way of those whom God have chosen to lead you and help you. Don't look down of people. Do not let prejudice get you hold of those whom God might have sent you to help you. And you know, I want to advise the men of God here. If you are men and women of God, raise up your hand. Just wave it there. I have something to tell you. You see, God is faithful. In this house, too many leaders, but few ministers of God. God knows what he's doing. But I have a message for you. Take this piece of advice. Many people walk tirelessly in your ministry that you may not know or recognize maybe the kind of role they play. They are part of your success in your ministry. Are you a pastor's wife? It is important for you to know and to teach our children to understand the fact that you depends 
on other people in your organization for the smooth running. As a pastor and a pastor's wife, you must let your children also understand that look, I depend on other people for the smooth running of this organization. Because by so doing, there will be fear of God. Because the Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Every person in that organization is a solution to a problem. Maybe the person is behind the scene. When we were coming, we saw some people that receive us. They were a solution to a problem. Oh, come in. That is the job there. Do you know how many times you have asked people to come in in a day? The sister is standing there, is doing one. Do you know how many things she has done today? Somebody, choir, they have sung people. All those people, they are solutions to a problem. And that is why Jesus had to have disciples, because he knew he couldn't have succeeded alone. Just as mouth needs words. The ear needs a sound. The eyes need a view. Viewers. And our feet need to go to places. Such is the relationship. That exists among the created things. And I want to advise you viewers all over the world. Wise leaders are rare to find. Many accomplished a great amount of and work without direct involvement. Many great leaders, they achieve great things without direct involvement because they knew how to walk through other people. But yet, they are the leader. Many successful people. You can say, Bill Gates. You mentioned Bill Gates, but you know how many people that made that name ringing every day in our ears that make him to stand and be who he is. Of course, he's a visionary, but he couldn't have succeeded alone without people. Viewers all over the world. Wise leaders are rare to find. If God has called you as a leader, Many accomplish a great amount of work without a direct involvement because they knew how to walk through other people. Of course, everything makes that little. I pray that God open your heart in whichever field he has placed you as a leader to lead in righteousness, to live in the fear of the Lord. And I know that God will multiply you beyond your expectation. He will enlarge your coasts and your territory. And you will have to say that this is the day the Lord has made. That the day that the Lord took me, hold my hands, touch me what I need to know in order to be a great leader for him. Maybe you think you are failed because of what I've just said. Don't worry. Abraham failed God. When he fled to Egypt during the drought, Moses lost his temper and turned violence, the Bible says. David even committed murder and adultery. Peter, the Bible says, denied our Savior three times. But yet, God used them mightily. God used them wonderfully. You may ask yourself, why? It's because they always learn to acknowledge their weakness each time they fall. No one is perfect. That your leader does not mean you cannot do wrong. Wrong can happen. But immediately acknowledge it. Come to sober reflection. A repentant heart. Run to God and seek his face. (laughs) 
acknowledging your weakness is one of the secrets of touching the heart of God. I pray that God and his infinite mercy touch your heart today. Whatever season you are in, one day you will thank God for the season of isolation that he kept you. One day you will thank God for that season of lies. One day you will thank God for that season of rejection that you were once. One day you will thank God for the season of persecution. Because they all serve for an extraordinary services. Those are the processes. Learn to trust it. May the Lord bless his word. In the midst of your hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ. I say the Lord bless his word. In the midst of your hearts. In Jesus name. May your heart be open to him. May the seed that you have received today. Multiply. In multiple ways. To the glory of the kingdom of God. In Jesus name. Now we will begin the anointing. But before I do that, I want you to turn with me to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16. It's very simple. It's about how God led prophet Samuel to anoint David. And I believe God has sent me to anoint, some, to anoint, and anoint someone here. Are you that person? Okay, let's quickly go to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 16. And the Lord said unto Samuel, which is prophet Samuel, how long will thou mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. Like I said to you, Saul was once a servant of God. But pride was one of his problems. And God took his spirit away from him. And one day God told Prophet Samuel, for how long? Because he's no longer the king. I'm he's just there. He's just there like camouflage. My spirit is no longer on him. I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemites, for I have provided me a king among his son. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul here, he will kill me all. The hole is not there. I had it. it. <laughs> and the Lord said, take and, uh, take and fire with thee and say, I will come to sacrifice to the Lord and call Jesse to sacrifice and I will show thee what thou shalt do and thou shalt anoint unto him. Take your time to read that. When Prophet Samuel got to the house of Jesse, he asked him to bring all his sons that God has sent me to announce your, anoint your children. As Jesse was bringing the children one by one, he will, the God will tell him, look, this one, I cannot work with him. You take your time to read. Another one, no. After he had brought everybody, then someone said, all those boys you've presented, there is no one here that God has shown me to anoint. Does it mean there's no other boy? He said, yes, I still have one. No. It's just a shepherd boy. You know, because he doesn't trust. He just believes that. Nah, just one, one boy like that. And that one boy like that, that is the one God chose. And when they brought David, the little shepherd boy, and he was anointed. The Bible said, from that moment, the Spirit of God live and walk with him. When you read your Bible, you understand how God used King David mightily. It was after that that God spoke to him. A small boy faced giant and four giants. When the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, it will make you to do an extraordinary things. Remember, when David received that 
anointing. It didn't just say, oh, I've received power. I want to start praying. But the word that he received and the Holy Spirit used him because there was no king anymore in Israel. And God anointed that small boy. And he spoke. Do you know when he faced Goliath, the Israeli army had faced Goliath countless of times without winning the war. But a small boy faced Goliath because of the anointing of God in his life. I want you to rise up on your feet. I know that the anointing here might look something that, of course, I bought it to. And the Spirit of God breathed in it. And I brought it by myself all the way from Nigeria. But it doesn't matter where it came from. The most important thing is it came from the throne of grace. That grace will speak for you today in the name of Jesus Christ. All I want you to do for me is just to open your palm. And I'm going to move around. But I'm just asking myself, Holy Spirit, how do we do this? This is crowd. But I know he will teach us how to do it. Just open your heart and say, Lord, I know it's my heart. I know it's my hand. So that my hand can work for you. Remember, as a banker, your hand can work for him. When you work for him, you be a vessel, a mouthpiece of God. Because you see a lot of clients every day. So everyone here has a ministry. Just open your heart. Our chorister cannot sing because they too want anointing. Who was singing yesterday when we were ministering? Outside. Okay, I know you too, you need anointing, but who, you and who? When I was outside, who is success? Okay, it's fine. We'll start now. You see all of them, they want anointing, but you, you sacrifice to be here. I will start from you. You will receive your own. And as we are going, you will sing for us. Everybody here anointing. Nobody comes here to start because I want to only this sister. So because of that, we will start from you. Anointing. lady needs serious prayer. Yesterday, I was praying for people. You were not here. You need spiritual flog. I am not joking. I always like to be frowned when I'm saying something that don't, see, for you to be what God has called you to be, don't depend on climbing on the shoulder of your parents. You have to work for it. Do you hear me? Fine, my, my, mother, my mother and my father has church. You have to serve. Serve with love and respect. And what God has promised you, you can have it. When others are serving, you to serve. They might say, oh, so, what's her name? Success. Don't do this. No, say no. Me too. I need the face of God. We all struggle to do it. Don't say because I be pastor daughter. So therefore, there's some privilege. Uh-uh. It doesn't work like that in the kingdom of God. Yes. Please. It is very, very important. Yesterday, after service, I don't know that you were the one singing when we were outside. But the spirit of God was singing through you. Yeah. At a point... We stop and we were worshiping with you because the angel of God we're singing along with you. Yes. 
And when it was time to pray for people, she was not here. When we finished the service, I said, but I, I remember everybody that God used me to touch. I didn't touch this person. She said, yes. She was not there. I don't know where she went. Anyway, she's here. So we'll attend to you now, okay? Jesus, there 
For the rest of eternity Only you, only you 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 Only you are God Only you are God Only you, only you Only you, only you Mas sim, mas que eu, mas que eu não posso. 
Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of my belly, out of my belly shall flow.
in front of my men. You are all that matter. You are all that matter. I'll make room for two. You and I, Jehovah. So Jesus, I can't deny it. He said, Jesus, we burned in my life. He said, Jesus, I can't deny it. Jesus, Jesus, 
Let your will be my will. Be my will. Let your will. Hallelujah. Be it up to you. Amen. Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. At this point, if you have not known the Lord Jesus, or you want to dedicate your life to Him. Remember that Jesus Christ is calling you today to come to him. If you want to give your life to Christ or you want to dedicate your life to him, come to him right now in your heart and say this simple prayer after me. Lord Jesus, view us all over the world. Say, Lord Jesus, I accept you into my life as my Lord and personal Savior. Wash me with your precious blood and save my soul today. I accept you today as my Lord and personal Savior. Make me your instrument of righteousness where there is sin. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you have truly said this prayer with all your heart, I'm telling you, your past is over. Amen. Corinthians says, all things are passed away. And all things are becoming new for you. I prophesize to your life today in the name of Jesus. Amen. That the oil you have received is from Christ Jesus. The anointing over your life will never run dry in the name of Jesus Christ. I understand we still have few people. Come forward. Thank you. Viewers all over the world. This is an instruction in righteousness. I tell you, by faith, you have received that anointing in your life as well. You have received that oil of grace, that oil of peace, that oil of mercy, healing and deliverance. I prophesy to your life in the name of Jesus Christ that the oil you have received today shall never run dry in the name of Jesus Christ. 
rise to your life in the name of Jesus Christ. That the oil you have received today, the oil, the anointing of God in your life, the anointing over your life today will make you to discover who you are. In the name of Jesus Christ. The anointing you have received today will lead you to the right path. The path of righteousness. The anointing you have received today will make you always the head and not the tail. The anointing you have received today will strengthen your heart desire and your determination for Christ. Viewers all over the world by faith, you have received that same anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. For those who are under the influence of my voice right now, that anointing, it's sin. What you have received today, it's sin, S-I-N. The seed of what you are becoming has been planted today. The seed of blessing. The seed of healing. The seed of deliverance. The seed of wisdom. The seed of knowledge. The seed of understanding. That will guide you in your path of righteousness. I leave you under the umbrella of the Holy Spirit. And I want to hear your testimony. Because I believe... I will, be, I will be sharing testimony number because I know that my God never fails. He's a God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The same God of TB Joshua. He never fails. I'm going to give you the number. Send your testimony because I know that something is changing. Something is moving. If God opens your eyes, you will see that you are not the same person that came here today. God has shifted to another level. He has filled you with confidence, courage, strength, energy, enablement in the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy to your life in the name of Jesus Christ. That this is a new beginning for you. Someone said, you shall be like the tree planted by the riverside that brings its fruit at its season. You shall bear your fruit in the name of Jesus Christ. Nothing will stop your fruit from bearing in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall always bear your fruit at its season. The Lord Almighty who has made you to be part of this anointing service today will help you to maintain what he has given you. Because he can only maintain what he has given you. I believe he has given you something today. He's an enemy of sin. Don't forget to love your neighbor as yourself. As 1 Corinthians 13 13 says, one thing will remain. Love is the greatest. Faith without love, of course, is faithless. Hope without love will be hopeless. Let the love of Christ be seen and evident in you in the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy to your life in the name of Jesus Christ that every area of your life shall continue to flourish in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to that rebellious spirit in your heart. There's a, there's a boy there that the mom brought you might say, but why everybody is receiving anointing? Some receive anointing for healing. Some receive anointing for deliverance. There are many people that have received their healing and deliverance. 
Some will receive anointing to lead. Remember, God searches the heart. He has made your heart desire to do in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't forget everything we have spoken today. It will guide you. It will strengthen you. And I'm very, very sure that your life shall continue to be a testimony for others in the name of Jesus Christ. Your life shall continue to be a testimony for others in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't look down on yourself. Because God has not given up on you. And I want to say something. It happens in many countries, even in my country. There are many people here who think in this country that mining, 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 mining is very good. But everyone should return into agriculture. Whether you're a pastor, look for a small land and farm. Whether you're a banker, look for a small portion of land and farm. Whether you're a politician, look for a small portion of land and farm. Farming is the occupation of destiny from Primordia. From the beginning. When you read your Bible, you will see that even when God put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, fruit upon fruits were there. Plenty. Surplus. If we are saying there is an economic crisis, as a leader here today, God has brought you here to be a solution to this nation. And God will ask you, if you don't follow the instruction, if a, a nation who invests in agriculture never lack. I understand there are resources, but there is something that we've neglected. Everyone should return to farming. When you do so, even whatever comes, God can use that to bless the people. Because as you are farming, you are not farming for your family alone. You are also taking other people's at heart. I said to you, you are a leader. A leader with a difference. Come and wave your hand and say thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you have done. Our Lord, our God, will bless you for what you have done. Father, I have delivered what you have sent me, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the greater things you are about to do in our lives. Thank you for the souls. Thank you for destiny restored. Thank you for the new dream. Thank you for opening the hearts of your people. And thank you for the grace you have put in their hearts. I pray that God give you the grace to maintain what you have received. In the name of Jesus Christ. As the new week began, go and possess your possession. Stop living in fear. You have the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, Satan may claim to have power, but you have the authority in the name of Jesus Christ to tell Satan where to go and he must obey. Learn the value of God's word in your mouth. Read your Bible with devotion. Slowly, attentively, and repeatedly. Because the Bible says the word of God is the only weapon that Satan cannot stand. The word of God is sharper than the two-edged sword, piercing through bone marrows. It's the same word that God gave the same David and put the Jericho, I mean put the giant down. The same word. When that word of God is planted in your heart, it becomes an integral part within you. 
There is no way you can develop what you have received to do without a relationship with God. Remember, God does nothing without his word. And I know that the Holy Spirit would guide you, will strengthen you, will lead you. If you are going wrong way, he will stop you. And it will look like a disappointment, but it is not. It is for the glory of God. God bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Do you want to talk? Viewers all over the world, thank you so much for joining us in this two days prophetic prayer revival. We thank you for your prayer. And I want to use this medium to also thank all our partners around the world. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for making it happen. And I want to thank you because I know that as these people here receive, you have received also. Amen. You are saying, oh, woman of God, when are you going to give me my own anointing oil? You have received it by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Unless if you don't believe. If you believe, the Spirit of God will visit you. And it will anoint you to preach the gospel, even though you are a banker. Amen. Even though you are a lawyer, a professor. In the name of Jesus Christ. God will use you to touch lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Outside doing what? <laughs> you can imagine. I never believed. You see, I never believed that this was still remain. I was thinking, you, know, you see, no, we are all human beings. We, we, we had two humans, two nature in person. I was thinking, ah, oh God, this will not be enough. And you can imagine, we didn't even use one third. That is the overflow. The grace of God has overflown in your life in the name of Jesus. Because the anointing of God never runs dry. You might think, oh, it's just a little. Who tells you it's little? It's planted within you. The anointing is inside, not outside. It shall be permanent in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It shall be permanent in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, beautiful people of Zambia. We love you. And we believe that the best is always yet to come in Jesus' name. I'm going to carry it. I'm looking. You. I'm seeing that woman. She's jumping. I'm carrying it. Oh. Thank you. God bless you. How many want Prophetess Ika to come back to Zambia? Hallelujah. If you want Prophetess Ika to come back to Zambia, make the devil laugh. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. Wait, listen. I want her to hear the sound. If you want Prophetess Ika to come back to Zambia, make a joyful noise. Jubilate, 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 jubilate. In those time. In those time. And the those time is Offering, wherever you are, lift it quickly. Don't connect to that anointing. Lift up your thanksgiving offering. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up, everybody. That's one of the secrets you have been prayed for.